Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name's Melissa and I'm here today with Sam Brager with Utah Lake Commission who's filming me from a safe distance away. And we're here in my agency's office. My other coworkers are all working from home and I hope you and your families are safe and healthy. Um, a big thank you to Sam and the Utah Lake Commission for the chance to record this virtual field trip. Doing the field trips is one of my favorite parts of my job every year, so I'm glad we can at least do a version of it um, here as a recording. I um, wish we could be together in person down at the lake, but I think uh, it's the important thing right now is that you stay home and you stay safe. So hopefully this will be a fun way to spend some time and learn a little bit about the lake. All right, well, this virtual field trip station is the Provo River Delta Restoration Project Station. And the Delta Project is a big restoration project that our agency is working on with a whole bunch of other partners. And if you're interested in more about the project or your parents are interested and want to learn more, uh, you can go check out our website, which is provoriverdelta.us. Now, for the next 15 minutes or so, we're going to kind of go through a lesson and get you ready to play a short version of a game that we call Musical Habitats. Probably maybe get a little help from Sam. Um, we'll see how we can pull that off here in the office versus out near the lake. Um, but before we get too far along, I like to ask questions. And you guys are on video, so I can't hear your answers. So do me a favor, put this video on pause and go get a piece of paper and a pen so you can write down some answers. Okay, go do that. Okay, you ready with your pen and paper? All right, let's get started. Now, my first question. Have any of you ever heard of the Provo River? You can just write down yes or no. Easy enough question. Okay, well, if you haven't heard of the Provo River, I'll show you here on a map where the Provo River starts and ends. So the Provo River is the biggest river that flows into Utah Lake. And have any of you ever visited the Provo River? Maybe with your families? Okay, some of you yes, some of you no. So, the Provo River starts way up in the Uinta Mountains. If you've ever gone to like Mirror Lake on camping or hiking up there or fishing. And then the Provo River, it flows into Jordanelle Reservoir. Maybe some of you have gone visited Jordanelle State Park. And then it flows through Heber Valley, which is another area where our agency has done a lot of restoration work. Great place to go fishing if you like fishing. Then it goes into Deer Creek Reservoir and continues down through Provo Canyon and then into Orem and Provo City before entering Utah Lake. Maybe some of you live in this area. I don't know where your schools are. Are you guys around from Provo or Orem? Excellent. Okay, so that's Provo River, and again, it's the biggest river that flows into Utah Lake. And I will tell you in a minute why it's an important river for a, an important fish that we're going to talk about a little bit. And you guys are going to get to be, pretend to be larvae of this fish. Now this special fish is a fish that only lives in Utah Lake. It's the only place in the whole world where this fish naturally occurs. You guys think you know what this fish is? It's also listed as endangered. Okay, think about it. Write down your answer if you think you know the answer. You got it? Oh, yes, you are right. It is the June sucker. I'm so glad that some of you have heard of it. So, the June sucker is a cool fish. I even have a picture of it here on my t-shirt, which is kind of cool. So yeah, I've got it on my shirt and I've got some pictures here of what this fish looks like. It's a pretty cool fish. Here's one photo, I've got a bunch. Gets to be pretty big, about 18 inches long. It's a good photo of what it looks like in someone's lap. For perspective, oh, before I get to this next photo, I have a question for you. So it's called the June Sucker. Any guesses why it's called the June Sucker? Why is it called a sucker? Hmm. If you have some ideas, write them down for me. Well, the answer is not that it's called a sucker because it sucks at walking, which is what one kid told me once, which was a pretty funny answer. But 
It is called a sucker because there's a whole bunch of kinds of fish that are in the sucker family, and they're called suckers because of their special lips. So here's some pictures of some June sucker lips. And go ahead and practice making some sucker lips yourselves, okay? Get that, get those lips out really, really good. Very good, very good. That's some good sucker lips. I can tell that you all are excellent suckers. Now, one special thing about the June sucker, a lot of fish in the sucker family are known as bottom feeders, and they actually generally swim like on the bottom of the lake or the river and eat food along the, the bottom of, of the lake or river. And so their lips, not only are they like all fleshy and stuck out, they're like, if you pretended your lips were down on your chin, that would be really weird. But the June sucker is not a bottom feeding sucker, it's a lake sucker. And it actually collects its food, it swims all through the water column, eating little zooplankton and macroinvertebrates, which are just little baby bugs and things like that. So it's, it's not a bottom feeding sucker, it's a different kind of sucker. So that's why it's called a sucker. I'll show you a couple more pictures of what the June sucker looks like. And that might be what I've got. Now, so that's what the adult June suckers look like. They're called suckers because of their lips. Why a June sucker? Why not a November sucker or an April sucker? What's that? Any guesses? Why is it June? Okay, yes, you are right. You've got some clever answers. June is a special time in the life cycle of this fish. So, remember when I was telling you about the Provo River? Yeah, it's the biggest river that enters Utah Lake. The June sucker spends most of its life in Utah Lake, but every June, and actually it's been a little earlier, May or April even sometimes, but in the spring, the June suckers swim up the Provo River and some of the other streams that enter Utah Lake to spawn. You guys know what spawn means? Think about that one. If you have an idea what it means, write it down for me. Okay. Some of you might have heard of spawning from playing Minecraft, and it kind of gets at the same idea, but, but spawning basically means the fish swims up, and lays its eggs. And that sort of spawns new baby fish. And fish, baby fish, do you know what they're called? They are called larvae. Have you ever heard of a larvae? Anyone? Oh yeah, yeah. Often other insects like butterflies and things like that start as larvae. You don't hear it for fish that often, but that is what technically young fish are called, are larvae. Now you don't call like a, what do you call a baby dog? I mean, it's not a larval dog, it's a, it's a puppy. But for some reason they call fish and insects, their, their babies are called larvae. And here's a picture of what these larvae look like. And to give you an idea, this is a big magnified version of one of those larvae, because they are really small. They are quite small. So here's a penny, and pennies aren't even really that big, but you can see there are like three June sucker larvae that fit on just part of a penny, so they're really small. You can see them, but just barely. They're that small. I think I might have another picture. Yeah, this is a picture of, so the fish lay their eggs, and then they grow. These are kind of the larvae, and then they grow into the big fish. So that's kind of an idea of what these larvae are. Now, I have a question. How many larvae do you think each June sucker produces? Any guesses? Think of some numbers that sound like good numbers. Write them down on your paper. 100? Well, it's more than that. 300? No, nope. still more. The answer is about 4,000. Each of these adult June sucker lays 4,000 eggs that hatch into 4,000 larvae. Can you imagine having that many brothers and sisters? Do any of you have that many brothers and sisters? Sometimes you guys tell me yes, but I don't really believe you. That would be a lot of brothers and sisters. So, now if you remember when we started, I told you guys that this is fish is endangered, which means there's not very many of them, right? Well, how can that be if 
every year thousands of fish swim up the Provo River and lay thousands of eggs that hatch all together. We're talking like millions of larvae. What do you think might be going wrong? You think all the larvae survive? Hmm. Do me a favor and spend a minute and think about what might happen to these larvae. Again, they're really small. Remember how many fit on that penny? Do you think they all survive? Hmm. Okay, do you guys have some guesses written down? Let's see, what might happen if you're one of these tiny larvae? You think you got enough food to eat? Maybe you can't find enough food. Yeah, that could happen. Oh, someone's saying that maybe they get people catch them and eat them? That's probably not a problem. The, the public knows pretty well that these are an endangered fish, and so they don't tend to catch and eat them. If they do, they know that they're supposed to put them back. And plus, these larvae are so small, they'd be really hard for a person to catch anyway. But, yeah, people don't catch them. What else might catch them? Any guesses? They're not a great meal for a person, but they might be a great meal for a bird. Pelicans. They love a good June sucker larvae snack. Same with gulls. They eat a lot of young June sucker larvae. So there's some bird predators. Any other guesses of what kind of predators might do you in if you're a June sucker? Larvae. <gasps> yes, other fish. The white bass. White bass really like to chow down on June sucker larvae. Some, oh, someone else had an idea of maybe a carp? You guys have heard about the carp in Utah Lake, I bet. But no, carp don't tend to eat the June sucker, but they make life hard for the baby June sucker because they stir up the mud on the bottom of the lake, and then there's no plants that can grow where the June sucker can hide from the fish that really do like to eat them. So carp are kind of an indirect problem with June sucker larvae being able to survive. So that's kind of the scoop. Good guesses on what might hurt the June sucker larvae or cause them to be endangered when so many get spawned in the Provo River every year. Okay, now, this is a really important question. You guys get your thinking caps on. Get ready to write down your answer. Here's the question. If you were gonna play a game of hide and seek, would you rather play hide and seek in the middle of a football field? And you can only hide in the grass, no bleacher hiding, okay? So just the grass part of a football field. Or would you rather play hide and seek in the middle of a forest? Okay, write down your answer. What? One of you saying you'd rather play in the middle of a football field? I told you, you can't hide in the bleachers. What are you gonna do, like wear an outfit of green turf and lie down in the middle of the grass? That's not gonna, there's no good hiding places in the football field. For yes, yeah, some of you said forest. That is such a better hiding place because there's so many trees, there's branches, there's logs, there's a lot going on, it's messy. Messy is good if you're talking about habitat for a June sucker. So looking at these photos, kind of the June sucker larvae version of where they'd rather play hide and seek. I don't know, you would rather be in this kind of empty sandy area? Or does this look like a good messy place to be? With lots of plants and places to hide. So this Provo River Delta Restoration Project we're doing is really geared towards turning this not very good habitat in the river right now with no place to hide those pelicans, those gulls, those white bass just chow down on all those thousands of your larvae brothers and sisters that get spawned every year and they don't make it. They don't survive to adults. And so we're kind of planning to create this new delta area with lots of wetland habitat, lots of vegetation and all that kind of stuff. Here's another little cartoon of kind of this difference of what we're trying to do um, with our delta restoration project. So here's some little baby suckers in a fishbowl, nowhere to hide. They are gonna get eaten up 
by those predator fish. And so we're trying again to make this much more diverse and colorful and interesting habitat with our restoration project. Okay, you guys ready to try this game? All right, let's give it a shot. It's time to play this game. And during this game, remember we've talked about those larvae, those little baby larvae that fit on a penny that are so vulnerable to predators and so forth. So you need to find your good place to hide. In this game, it's a, normally we'd play it outside and it'd be like musical chairs and we'd march around in a circle around these chairs, which are really just these fabric squares. And then when the music stopped, you'd pick one to sit on and then we'd see if you survive or not. So this is like, we're checking what habitat you end up in and whether you're able to survive. So while we play this, I want you guys to put on your sucker lips. Okay, you're gonna be larvae. You're gonna be drifting down through the Provo River and we're gonna see where you end up. Do you get stuck in the old channel where the habitat's not very good? Or do you wind up in the new Delta where we have that better, messier, lots of vegetation underwater, places to hide kind of habitat. Okay, you guys ready? I'm gonna play some music. If you wanna stand up and maybe play a song at your house while we do this, or just play the video a little louder, that'll work. Okay, I want you to have fun. Okay, the music stopped. It's time to pick your habitat. Was it this one you wanted? Which one do you think is gonna be the safest one? Wait, no, this one, this one. Okay, you're sure. Let's see what we've got here. <gasps> Uh-oh. What do you think, did you survive? No, sorry, you got eaten by a pelican. You gotta go in the middle, in the pit of despair. This is the problem. This is why the fish is endangered because most of them get eaten by predators until we finish our Delta restoration project. Okay, let's try one more time. Let's see if you can survive. Oh, you're at this one. Okay, okay, well. We know it won't be the pelican. We lost the pelican. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. I don't see any good habitat. What does this look like? This is just a square of water. You're just going in the water. There's nothing to hide in. No food in here. Oh, there's a lot of grass because we kind of didn't clean these after last fall. But the grass isn't going to get it done for you. So. Gosh, no, you just don't have any habitat. So I don't think you're gonna make it. Let's try again. Okay, get up and swim again. This one? Nice. Oh my gosh, this looks a little better to me. Yeah. See, it's like some vegetation. You got a pattern, you got some places to hide. Good job, larvae. Now, I'm not gonna play another round, but let's just see. Out of curiosity, what happened on this one? Oh, white bass. You got eaten, you're going to the pit of despair. So that's kind of the scoop on what's up with the June sucker larvae and why we're trying to make a better habitat for them at our new Provo River Delta project. And so thank you guys so much for tuning in to this virtual field trip. And the Provo Delta project is currently under construction. And um, it's gonna take about four years to build it. Well, five almost, 2024. Think of for a minute, how old are you gonna be when it's 2024? Because you're gonna be like in high school or something or junior high. Do me a favor, when, when it gets to that point and where we're done with this project, I want you to go do your own actual in-person field trip and go check out the new Provo River Delta and remember why we did it so there would be great habitat for June sucker larvae.